Okay, so welcome back, everybody. Um, today's goal is to understand Musaf, not just on Yom Kippur, but Musaf and all the holidays. I'll start with a little introduction to davening. I just want to begin with the direction I'm going in. I want to highlight a parallel between our Musaf davening and Moshe Rabbeinu going up to get the second Luchot. Remember, Moshe goes up twice for 40 days, first for the first Luchot, and then prays, and then goes up for the last 40 days to get the second Luchot. Now, what happened, someone can tell me, what happened when Moshe came down with the second Luchot? What was special that like, even Christians know? His face was shining. His face was shining. Now, do you know a song in Rosh Hashanah that sounds like that? Mara Cohen? Yeah. Mari Cohen uses exactly that imagery of the Kohen Godel leaving the Kodesh Kodeshim with his face shining. Now, that same Kohen Godel who leaves the Kodesh Kodeshim with his face shining, was he able to eat and drink that day? He couldn't eat and drink. Did he go in all alone into the Kodesh Kodeshim? Yeah. No one else was allowed to be there with him? Okay. Now, what's in the Kodesh Kodeshim? The Luchot. Right? What's the most you're going to get? The second luchot. Right? What does God tell him when he gets the second luchot? Don't break he's them. Come with the attributes of mercy. Yeah. Isn't that Rosh Hashanah davening in a nutshell? In Rosh Hashanah? Okay. So I'm, that that's not a share. That's just a, a introduction. But I'm trying to show you that there's tons of parallels. And what, what I want to try and show you in today's share is that if I want to understand Rosh Hashanah, I mean, Rosh Hashanah, because you Kippur davening, and what we do in Musaf, um, what's happening on, on Yom Kippur, I want to claim is we're reliving Har Sinai, but not Har Sinai the first Luchot, Har Sinai the second Luchot. It's sort of Shavuos, take two. And and last week what we talked about was that once a year, the temple needs a cleansing kind of idea, but the main thing is we need to restart, almost like Rosh Chodesh kind of idea. Or rest, right, we're restarting um, even though he did nothing wrong. The idea is, remember, um, we saw the Mizbech Torah once a year. We need to have some type of uh, Kippurim on the Mizbech once a year. And the question is, are we cleansing the sins of last year? Or are we simply preparing for another year of encountering God and meeting our boss and having that, that employee review? So I want to go primarily, not to, they're not mutually exclusive, but I want to show you how Yom Kippur, in many ways, is getting ready for another year of service of God, remember with the employee uh, relationship as opposed to the consumer relationship with God. So let's take a quick look and um, I'll begin to share now and we'll talk about davening a little bit. And let me share my screen. I think I can share now. Okay, that's good. Okay, so today is class number three in our Tishrei month of holidays or holiday month series. Today's topic is the meaning of Musaf of Yom Kippur in light of Ayikra chapter 16. The main goal is to simply study the Torah reading for Yom Kippur. That would be a boring title. Uh, but the Torah reading of Yom Kippur is very much related to what we do in Musaf. So I'm going to begin with um, the key difference between, this is very general, the first 10 minutes. What's the key difference between tefillah on weekdays and holidays? Okay, let me, I'm going to stop the screen for a minute so you don't be can. Um, someone tells, can someone tell me, what's the main difference when we have a Shmon Esrei? How is Shmon Esrei different on the holidays as opposed to on every day? No bakasha. Oh, they're taken out, and with the bracha, that has to do with the day. Okay, so the bracha is about the day, okay, and there is no blessing about. There's no requests for, for your for day to day needs, and if during laning you're going to ask God to pray for someone, let's say someone's ill, what do you? How, what's your matir? <laughs> what do you say? What's what, what's your nishabas karet? Shabbat timi lizok. Even though you're not supposed to cry on Shabbos, we're going to cry it anyhow. Remember. We call that Nishabas Gurat. Um, so the the um which means in general we don't ask for our needs. But if we're if we're davening Shmonesri, which is Tfilah, we're asking for our needs. So there is something we're asking for on including Shabbos. Remember, I'm putting Shabbos together with Yom Tov. Because weekdays is opposed to Shabbos and Yom Tov. Wait, what is it that we do pray for? Ever think about that? There's something we are praying for, otherwise it wouldn't be prayer. What are we praying for on the holidays? Is that a good question? The question is better than the answer I'm going to give you. So if you're stopping Shmonesrei, that's tefillah. 
If you're davening, you have, you know, if you have shevach before bakasha, okay? we're asking God for something. Otherwise, it wouldn't be shmon esrei. We wouldn't say titkabel slotom. We wouldn't say tarish titkabel if you weren't asking, praying for something. It could be we're asking, we're saying we're asking, we're praying that God gives us the ability to keep the holiday. But I, I want to I want to bring a proof from from the sitter or from the moxer. It's super simple. Now we'll talk about atavaratan in a little bit. But the main prayer is elokenu v'lekabotenu. Whenever you see elokenu v'lekabotenu, you're about to pray for something, right? So I'm going to show you um, what we pray for. I'm going to share what we pray for on on Rosh Hashanah because Rosh Hashanah. And Yom Kippur are a unit. Now, what we pray for in Rosh Hashanah is not what we pray for in Yom Kippur, but there's one phrase that has Shabbos, Rosh Hashanah, Yom Kippur, Shosh Galim. There's one phrase that everyone has. I'll share yeah. that with you. Yeah. I'm going to show it to you in Rosh Hashanah davening, and then you'll tell me where Shabbos kicks in. Okay, let's take a look. I'll share my screen. Um, here we go. I stole from a master and I formatted it a little bit, and we have here. Um, We'll do Atavachatano later on. Elokeinu v'lekevotenu is a prayer. Agreed? We're praying to God be king over his entire creation. Remember, Rosh Hashanah is a new year for everybody. It's not a Jewish new year. It's everyone's new year. But we're the first to make God king. Okay? But we're announcing God's kingdom over everyone. And we're hoping that in other words, God can be the El HaKadosh. A king is only king if he has subjects. You know, a, a, God can have all the power if no one recognizes him. He's not. He's not a king. He's a god. But you're only king when you're nima. When people recognize you. When people accept you. So we're hoping that everyone recognize God. Okay. call it and your glory should be over the entire land. Remember, call it's not the land of Israel. It's the whole God's whole creation. And this is universal as could be. Okay. Every living thing that moves should know that you're the one giving him the ability to work. And everything created should know that you're the one giving him the ability to be creative, to be created. Okay. Now listen carefully. This is a shir now in Rosh Hashanah. Every living person should say, Hashem Elokei Yisrael Melech, which means Hashem, the God that Israel is talking about, he's everyone's king. You know, if we're chosen to make a name for God, okay. we're hoping for that our goal as God's people will be fulfilled. And therefore, we're saying that this idea, Hashem Elokei Yisrael, doesn't mean the God who takes care of Israel. The God that the people of Israel talk about. I, I have this um, maybe discussion. I'm, I'm not really sure, but I'm pretty sure. I'm not, did Rabbi Jade, you get to Shmon Esrei yet in your series on davening? In, in, in the first line of Shmon Esrei, we say, When we talk about the God of Abraham, is that the God who took care of Abraham? Is that the God that Abraham discovered you know, through detective reasoning? Is that the God who Abraham, or is that the God who Abraham talked about? Is that the God who took care of Yitzhak or the God that Yitzhak talked about? If I didn't have Chumash, I'd question it. But because in Chumash, what does Abraham do for a living? He calls out in God's name, as says Yitzchak, and Yaakov's dream is to do that. So in, my understanding is, in the beginning of Shemesha, we're talking about our ancestors, because what did they do? They made a name for God by talking about him, by how they talked and how they acted. And therefore, in our praise of God, we, we, we sing, our ancestors talked about you, made your name great, okay? and we want to do the same thing. And therefore, v'zocher chas de'avot, umevi go'el ifnei v'nehem l'man shmo. If you bring redemption for us, that'll make your name great because we're talking about you. But then Melech was there and therefore we're asking God to protect us and save us and that'll make your name great. So number one, on Rosh Hashanah, we're praying specifically that our goal as the Jewish people should be fulfilled. That, that our goal should be fulfilled. Now, we're, to facilitate that, we have to be doing our job properly. But praying that God's kingdom um, should be recognized by everyone and we should help facilitate that that's something to pray. That's a transformative prayer which affects how you behave. It means you care about what other nations think about you. You care about other people and how you're viewed. Okay? And your kingdom is everywhere. Now, 
How will that happen? Now we're praying, okay? you know, make it special by our keeping your mitzvot. And our portion should be following your Torah. Okay? Allow us to enjoy your good. And we should be happy with your redemption. And now, in my opinion, the key of all davening. On Shabbos in Yom Tov, what is it? Which means what? That's a prayer, isn't it? That's not praise. That's a prayer that even though we're serving God and we want to serve God, we're praying to God that we're going to do it right? in a pure way and do it in a truthful way. It's easy to serve God, to keep mitzvot, but people can do it in a phony way. And praying now, on, but we're praying on Shabbat when we have time to reflect on our week and our holidays and we're reflecting on bigger things. We're praying to God on the holidays and that main prayer that we're good servants of God. We recognize we're chosen to serve God. We'll see that in the introduction in a minute. But the main thing we're praying for is um, since I just came from the dedication of Rav Vital Center in Yeshiva. Um, this is Rav Vital's most popular song. He sang on Simchas Torah, but uh, and also on Davening. Uh, was his, uh, anyone who knows Yeshiva Har Tzion was intended. That, that was Rav Vital's like, famous song. He would sing and repeat it all the time in all the tishes, especially on Simchas Torah. But that request that's prayer. That's the prayer of Shabbat. Now, don't we say that on Shabbat as well? We say it on Yom Tov. That's the main prayer that we do that we say on Shabbat and holidays that we don't say on a weekday. On the weekday, we ask for our needs. On Shabbat, we ask God, we want to be good servants of God. We want to do a good job. Help us do it with truth and with pure with purity. Okay? Because you're a God of truth. Therefore, we want to serve you, Bemet, because you're a God of truth. And your words are true, right? And you're there forever. And therefore, we bless God, who's the king of the whole land, who separated Israel to serve him and, and made this day special, be it Yom Zikaron, Yom Kippurim, whatever, um, whatever the holiday is going to be. Or Makari Shesor Basmanim, we say in Yom Tov. Now, this is the Rosh Hashanah um, prayer. I just wanted to highlight the Tarah de Bainu of the Chabemet as the main prayer, of, of the main holiday prayer. Now, the introduction to all the holidays, I'm sure you know this by heart, is the main theme of the holidays, isn't it? I mean, it's the main theme of Judaism. What are, we, what are we recognizing? If we're taking a day off to remember our relationship with God and why we're chosen, not only that we're chosen, but why we're chosen. So the first thing we open up Tefillah with in Shemon after our three brachot of, of Shebach is we recognize you chose us. Out of love you chose us. Right? You wanted us to serve you. You elevate us from the, all the different nations to serve you. We serve you by keeping your mitzvot. You separated us by giving us mitzvot to keep, to serve you. And now we get to the key point. The reason why you chose us was so that we can serve you. That's the introduction to our request later on. We want to do it. Now it purifies so we can serve you with truth. But we're recognizing before we say that, in the beginning, in the introduction, the reason you chose us and you brought us closer to you and the special reason we have this special relationship is to serve you, like the Gan Eden imagery. And now the big theme, your name and reputation, your great name, right, is associated with us. And therefore, we'll see, that's going to be, that's the show already on Rosh Hashanah davening. On, um, it's our duty to praise God, but, but we're hoping that God's kingdom will be over everyone. That'll be the uh, Aleinu. Okay, so that, that's my little introduction to davening in general. Um, but, but what's the theme of Yom Tov and Shabbos davening as opposed to weekday davening? It's uh, basic stuff. Now, um, all the holidays we saw in, in Perach of Gimon Vaikra, remember Elam Wad Hashem Mikrei Kodesh? Does anyone remember what Mikra Kodesh means? Mikra is to call out. We're separating a special time to call out to gather. It's a national gathering. That's why work is not permitted. Banks are closed. We call it a bank holiday. The businesses are closed. The marketplace is closed so that we can gather. And we gather to talk about the theme of each holiday. And therefore, what's a Mikra Kodesh? We call out to the community to gather. We gather in Shul and we talk about the theme of the holiday. But it's a time set aside to talk about the holiday. And that's what we're doing in the beginning of Shemun Okay, Now, before we pray and ask for our needs, we praise. 
So the first part of Shemnes, remember, is praising God, Magen Abraham, Machayim Etim, etc. And Allah Kadosh, that's praise of God. But prayer, classic prayer, is asking for our needs. But if you're a servant of God and you want to do, and you want to be a good employee, you enjoy your job, you identify with your job, then one of your prayers is not just help me with my needs. Remember, that's the consumer. The idea that you're an employee in front of God, you're praying to be a good employee. I want to do a good job. Help me be a good employee. Give me some guidance. You know, make sure I do my job well. So again, if I use that consumer employee analogy, you know, how do we stand in front of God? Our prayer on Yom Tov is to be, you know, it's maybe during the weekday, we're standing in front of God as consumers. Give us, you know, give us parnasa, give us prosperity, give us health, give us wealth, etc. And give us peace. But on Yom Tov, we're asking to be good workers. We're standing as a consumer. I mean, sorry, we're standing in front of God as a as an employee who wants to be a good employee, who identifies with the job and loves his job, and wants to do a better job, wants to climb the ladder in employment. Now, um, the standard structure of Tefillah on the holidays, remember, we have the same three brochet of Shemesh, say the introduction, okay? Then we have Atava Khartanu, and then we have um, Yalav Yovo. On, on, and I'm talking about not Musaf, I'm talking about Shachris, Marv Shachris and, and Mincha. We have Atav Khartanu always in the beginning. Then we have Yalav Yovo. If we have time, we'll go to it. That will have time today. And then we have Elokeinu Fakai Boteinu, the request. With each holiday is a little bit special. So to be a special bracha for Rosh Hashanah, for Yom Kippur, and for the Shalosh Vagalim. Remember, Vasienu is the one for um, Shalosh Vagalim. Now, Musaf is different. I'll stop here for a minute. There was the, the, the standard tefillah, of, again, of, of Marv, Shakris, and Mimcha, is recognizing why we're chosen and asking God that we're good servants of God, of the Tarah Libenu, and then Yala Viova, asking God to consider, you know, in judging us on this time of year, to take into consideration all of our history. And if we have time, we'll talk about um, Yala Viova later on. But how is Musaf different than, than the regular Tefillah of Yom Tov? Words, who can tell me what makes Musaf unique to the to the regular Shachris Mincha Mar? I mean, yeah, Shachris Mincha and Mar. How is Musaf different? It talks about the Kabbanos. Kabbanos. Yeah, it talks about the extra Korban in addition to me, based on Parsha Pimchas. Correct? Now, you, therefore, what do we do on Musaf? We make a piyut. We have a, a little poem in the beginning. Tikanta Shabbat. It's backwards, I'll look in case you never paid attention to it. Um, we stay on, on Yom Tovim. We start like Jewish. Right? We don't deserve anything. No, it's not our. It's your. It's, not, it's our fault. We're not in our land, and it's, and it's, we wish we could bring this up, but we can't. But it's our fault. Um, and then we say, then we wish. Remember, we pray that God brings us back to our land, and allows us to rebuild the temple so we can bring your korbanot. And should that happen, remember, and then um um uh, remember all the things we pray for that. Somehow God fulfilled the last couple century or so. Because we're back in our land. We came back from corners. We're back in our land, etc. But we have another stage or two to go. But then we say, should we be able to build our temple, we would bring this korban, and we quote the korban from Parshat Pinchas, the special korban they brought on Musaf. And that's the standard Musaf. And we always quote from where? From Parshat Pinchas. Correct? Remember? One power, two parim. Always uh, mm -hmm. one aisle, seven kvasim, and a ser lachatat, and then sukkah is a little special. Now, what makes Yom Kippur different when it comes to Musaf? Yeah, yeah. In other words, there's an extra avodah, the Beit HaMikdash, on Yom Kippur, which is the seder avodah of the Kohen Gadol. It's not in Parshat Pinchas. Like Pinchas doesn't, doesn't describe it. Where is it described? It's described in, in Akhremot, Akhremot, which will be our topic today. And therefore, when we dive a Musaf on Yom Kippur, we don't do the classic Musaf of simply quoting the Psukim from, from, um, from Parsha Pinchas, the classic Korban. We're going to do that. In addition to that, we're also going to do the Yom Kippur Avodah in, um, from Baikro Chav Gimel. Why aren't they together? We have to see. But basically, Musaf and Yom Kippur is special because Yom Kippur is a different day because it doesn't have the standard Musaf. In addition, there's a Musaf to the Musaf. In addition to the regular Musaf, there's a special Seder Abodah. And therefore, that's why Yom Kippur Musaf is so long. 
Now, in one of our shiurim, um, on the Sai Shabbat, the next two weeks, we'll be talking about the Musaf on the, the last one, the one on um, our shir Erv Yom Kippur. Sorry, Erv Yom Kippur. Our shir will be on on the piyut, but this is the background to that shir. Today, we're going to study what the Avodah is and say for everybody Kura and why is everybody Kura and not with the other Musafim. Okay, so that's the background, and let me just check the chat and we'll get to work. Okay, that's just for source sheets. Okay, no questions on the top, on the content so far. So well, that's good. Okay, let's share my screen now and pick up where we left off. Yeah. So we talked about why Musaf is different and Yom Kippur is different. Okay. Now comes my favorite question. Now we start to share. <laughs> Everyone knows that Kohen Gadol enters the Kodesh Kodesh and Yom Kippur, right? And we sprinkle the blood here, there, up, down, you know, up one, seven, down, the whole thing. Everyone knows there's a special Badem Kippur. It's complicated, but everyone knows about it. Now, here's what's called a Chakira, okay? The Avodah of the Kohen Gadol and Yom Kippur. What is its purpose? Does the Kohen Gadol enter the Holy of Holies to bring the Korban? Understand? Or does he bring the Korban in order to enter? I'm going to repeat it to make sure it's crystal clear. Because it's the key to understanding, in my opinion, not just the Avodah, but also Yom Kippur. It's the goal of the day to bring a Korban, meaning... For some reason, we don't understand why. Ask a Kabbalist why. God needs the blood of a goat sprinkled in the Holy of Holies to forgive us. Um, and someone's got to do it. And the best person to do it is the coin Gadol. Or is the main thing that's happening is on this day, the coin Gadol is entering the Kodesh Kodeshim. That's the goal of the day. Because we're showing God we want to return to Mount Sinai. The coin Gadol is representing the Jewish people. I'll clarify this. Obviously, that's the direction I'm going in. Right? That on this day, Am Yisrael is showing God, we want to work for you. Right? We, we want we want to return to our encounter in Har Sinai. We want to accept the covenantal commitment to be your people. We want to work for you. We want to serve you. And to show you that, we're entering the Kodesh Kodeshim, which is the same way we're climbing Mount Sinai again, to receive the Torah. And in theory, I should be doing this once a year when? On Shavuos. But that didn't work, did it? <laughs> that fell apart. What enabled the encounter? That's at, with Yom Kippur. Got it? Therefore, the safest day to do it, not, not the only day to do it, okay? the correct day to do it would be Shavuos. The safest day to do it is going to be Yom Kippur. That's my key point. Okay. Now, what I want to show you is that in order to enter, you can't come barging in. You need, you need a ritual of entry. Or, and now... In other words, entering the Kodesh Kodeshim is dangerous. Give me an example of how dangerous it is. Right? When you get close to God. Uh, not, not of an Aviyu. Not of an Just read chapter 17 and, and chapter 19 in Shemot. We'll go back to it. Remember? The whole preparation for our Sinai. You know, court in the mountain, no one come close. We'll, we'll talk about all the warnings that God gives them. Entering the Kodesh is dangerous because it's God's domain. And who are you to enter? I hate to use this analogy, but it's the best one because probably most of you saw the Wizard of Oz. Right? Remember when Dorothy wants to go, no, remember the, whoever the guard is there? No one can see the wizard. No, no one. Remember, remember the, and the mm -hmm. lion jumps out the window. So the, again, <laughs> but the idea that no one can enter, but we have to enter <laughs> because <laughs> we have to, we have to get our, uh, whatever it is, we have to get our soup, whatever it is. I forgot why Dorothy has to go, but She's got to go, and uh, she's got to see the wizard. Now, the Havdil, again, Elif Havdilot. So my point is, we have to enter because that's how we show God. But we we just can't enter. We need protect. We need a protected entry. We need a buffered entry, and we need protection. What's the word for that protection from the Shekhinah? That's the word Kapara. That was last week's share. And that's I'm tying this week's share to last week's share. We need Kapara in order to enter. Words, no human that can enter that domain without protection, just like if a building's in fire. In fact, Harsinai is, 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 is you, there's an analogy comparing Harsinai to fire that we had that over and over again in Sefer Shemot and Sefer Dvarim. Remember Bar Sinai, Asham Kulo, and the people saying Sefer Dvarim, Moshe, what human, what mortal can survive this Ash? You go up, but we can't survive it because no one can stay there and stay alive. It's just like a, a fireman can't go into a building that's on fire um, because he'll be consumed by the fire, but he has to go in to save the people. So he puts on a fire suit. He has to put on a protective suit to enable him to enter the fire. 
In a similar way, the Kohen needs to do something to show he, it, that he's entering the area of Shekinah and we need protection. And the most important thing, we have to show God we're privy to a relationship we're not worthy of. Because we're an Am Oref. And uh, I'll I'll just get to the end of the share. Is that Mikar did like from, from a realistic standpoint, it's impossible to enter without being consumed. Because okay? we're mortals. We can't. Okay? And we're not worthy because we're a step naked people. We're not perfect. And we don't deserve to enter to be so close to God. But we have to enter because we want to do our job. And therefore, what makes us worthy, you know, even though we're not worthy of, of entering, what makes us worthy of entry is our recognition that we're not worthy. Hope you guys understand the paradox. And that's how I understand philosophically the meaning of the said Rabuda. It means we're showing God we're not worthy. What makes us worthy is our recognition that we're not worthy, but we want the job anyhow. And the reason why God can't fire us is because we're so dedicated to our job, even though we mess up all the time. I give another bad analogy like the cleaning lady you can't fire. She's been working for the family so long, she never, the house is never clean anyhow, but you can't fire her because. She's part of our family. Now, um, so now we have to explain what's this need for protection when encountering Shekhinah. Hope that's clear. And now I want to begin just a couple examples from Shul chapter 19, and then from Yom Hashmini, and then we'll do the, the Avodah. So I'm going to stop the screen and just go back to regular old Chumash. Open up a regular Chumash. You're familiar with these Pesukim. I simply want to show you, in Sefer Shemot, we'll go back to chapter 19. It's called The Encounter with God at Harsinai. We read this this morning. We're all familiar. But um, remember, Brit at Sinai. We arrive at Harsinai. Moshe goes up and God says, here's the proposition. Remember? That's the proposition. Are you willing to obey me? My covenant partner. You'll be my treasure nation. You'll be a nation representing me. And, and, and that's the proposition to other people. The people, Moshe tells the people, the people ratify it. And now we're ready for the encounter. And God tells Moshe Rabbeinu, I'm going to come to you in the thickness of a cloud. In other words, Moshe needs a cloud that Anan will be like the Anan Torah later on. But the people are going to be outside, so the people can hear from the outside. <clears throat> and then they'll trust what you say in God's name. And the people want a closer encounter. Remember? And God tells Moshe Rabbeinu, go to the people. Vikidashtam hayom machar v'chibsu simlotam. Erev Yom Kippur. What's be prepared for this encounter with God. Clean your clothes, go to the mikvah. We learn mikvah from here. Be ready for day three. Be ready for this encounter with God. Because on the third day, what's going to happen? God's going to come down to the point that people can see them. And therefore, I need to cordon off, set boundaries on the mountain. No one can touch. Okay? And if everyone goes too close, they'll be shot or stoned. Okay? Moshe Gusan gets them ready. And gives them the warning. Comes day three. Kolot Prakrim. Everyone knows the story. The people get scared. Moshe brings them back to the mountain. Har Sinai is smoking with fire. Okay? And everything's shaking. The, the chauffeur blowing is loud and strong. As Moshe would speak out one answer. And here's the psukim we need now. God comes down to Mount Sinai. This is in all preparation for Har Sinai. He calls Moshe. Vayem Hashem and Moshe. Raid Ha'ed Ba'am. Go warn the people. You can't get too close. It's a final warning before the theophany, before encountering God. You can't look. Look into us. And even the Kohanim, the 70 elders in Nadav and Aviv, who are allowed to go, they have to be careful, lest God um, break his anger out of, of, on them. And that's what happens in Nadav and Aviv later on. Let's speak Ravaya Kadesh later on. Okay, Moshe argues for the people, don't worry, they're warned. And God tells Moshe, go down. The encounter with God is dangerous. Got it? Warn the people, be prepared. All I'm showing you is that this encounter with God needs protection, is dangerous, because maybe philosophically speaking, man can't, can't get that close to God, but man wants to be that close to God. You're, you're 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 striving to be close, but you can't be that close. You're in this dialectic all the time, and therefore we present our guests, ourselves in front of God, but we need protection. Yeah. Now I want to show you that in the avodah. Um, where do we see that? So remember the first one, 
you know, we see with Chet Egel. Everyone knows the story with Chet Egel. Um, let's go back to, sorry, share screen and back to our source sheet. Uh, we want to see what happens on Yom HaShemini on the first day. We'll go back to that in a minute. Uh, but we, we, this review we did from last week, the Mizbach Torah needs Kapra once a year. This is a review from last week. We'll talk about this once a year need to cleanse the temple or protect it for a new year of work. But um, remember, there was it said once a year with no specific date, and we have to see how, why the date becomes Yom Kippur. Now, in chapter 9, what happens? Remember, there's seven days of preparation. What happens on, on chapter 9? We talked about this briefly last week. I simply want to show you. What, what I want to, I'll explain my main point, and then we'll see it inside. On the eighth day is the first day the Mishkan is functional. Now, remember, let me go to the end of the source sheet. I put it as an appendix. The famous Ramban which is the background of the whole shir. Ramban claims in, the, in his commentary in the beginning of Parshat Truma, what's the purpose of the Mishkan? In words, the, the main part of the Mishkan is the Aron, which represents the Shekhinah dwelling among us. Okay? And then he brings two kings, but I'm going to meet you there and speak to you from on top of the Kaporet. Okay? But the main thing is, what's the deeper meaning of the Mishkan? Kavod Asher Shachan Al Har Sinai Shochein In Har Sinai, everyone encountered God. We saw Him. Remember, there was fire. There was fire, there was it was shaking. It was what's called nigla. To understand the most basic concept of of of, of uh, Kabbalah, that was God's Shechina was nigla. What's nigla mean? <laughs> you couldn't miss God. Impossible. You stood there. You, you encountered God. It was scary. And made everyone scared, but there was an encounter of people with God, and you heard it, everything. So you couldn't miss it. How to transform that into an eternal reminder of that experience? That's the Mishkan. And therefore, the same presence of God is there, but it's Benistar. It means you don't see it staring at you. You can perceive God, but you don't see God. That's the star of the Mishkan. But all the rituals come so that when you come to the Mishkan, you psychologically or um, you put yourself in a frame of mind where it's though you're standing at Har Sinai. It's like the three steps before Shmon Esrei and starting Shmon Esrei. You, you're putting yourself in a frame of mind through a ritual that you're standing in front of God. So therefore, standing in front of God in Shmon Esrei is like standing in front of God um, in the Mishkan. It's like standing God in the Mishkan. The Shmon and the Mishkan always go hand in hand. So that background of, of the of once the Mishkan is a mini Harsina. Remember, we never leave Harsina, we take it with us. It's a famous Ramban, and he does he just proves it beautifully. And, and again, I think we did that show way back, but with all the textual parallels, there's no doubt the Mishkan is a mini Harsina. Now, let's go back now and see what happens on the ninth day. On the on the eighth day, on this day, the Mishkan now is functional. We built it, but remember, um, when when Moshe Davin and God declared his attributes of mercy, actually, let me go back to that pasuk real fast. This is probably the most important. Um, let me go back to Sefer Shmot. In, in the end of chapter 24, when Moshe goes up to Har Sinai, this is him the Rambam builds everything on, God tells Moshe, come up the mountain and I'll give you the Luchot Evan and the Torah. And Moshe goes up for 40 days. When Moshe goes up for the 40 days, he goes... The Anan covers the mountain. Remember this Anan? For Hashem is on Har Sinai. This is chapter 24 in Shemot. He covers it for six days and he calls Moshe on the seventh day. It's the day of Matan Torah. Remember? Umarek for Hashem ke'eish ocher broshar de'nei b'nei Yisrael. Ve'evel Moshe betoch Anan ve'evel ha'ar ve'im Moshe bar ve'im bar melayla. That's the first luchot. But the people encounter God and they see Moshe going into a cloud where God is. Very similar to Yom Kippur. Because I need to make the cloud that's the Anan Ktoret it's going to represent the cloud. Now, um, this one didn't work, remember? And we sit with Cheta Egel, and the Shekinah leaves. In the famous line, I'll just bring one little point. When God's angry with Moshe, he tells him, Moshe takes his tent and puts it outside the camp, far away from the camp. And now it's a temporary Ohamoid, um, a temporary tent of meeting where only God meets Moshe, but it's not Dima Ohamoid. Anyone looking for God had to leave the, leave the camp to go Ohamoid. Which is Michutza Machane. Okay? And then Moshe Davins and tells God this isn't going to work. Remember? That was what he called. He begs that 
you know, remember Ureki Amcha Goyase, and God argues with him, and finally God gives in and says, okay, I'll bring my Shechina back, I, you know, it's, and I'll give you uh, Bidat the Rachamim, that's the share on the God's attributes of mercy. It may, hopefully we'll talk about more in detail next week. Now, in chapter, in the next chapter, God gives Moshe the second Luchot, and here's everything we have on Yom Kippur. God tells Moshe, um, you know, get two more Luchot ready, um, then I get ready in the morning, you go up Baboker on Har Sinai, Bishlol Yalimach, that's going to go to going by himself into the Kodesh Kodeshim, and no one can be with you on the mountain, even animals, that's the lone entry of Moshe to Sinai, the Kohen Godel going to the Kodesh Kodeshim. Moshe goes up, God gives him the second Luchot, but with the Luchot, God declares his attributes of mercy, I'm, I'm no longer an El Kana, I can be an El Rachum Vachanun, I'm not Harona, I have Erech Apan, I'm slow to anger, instead of Chesed Lo Havai, God's Rav Chesed, the abundant chesed, or sometimes the back chesed, but it's not only lo avai, it's for everybody. Instead of lo yisalapi shechem, God's no sev on b'fesha. Instead of lo yinakeh, v'nakeh lo yinakeh. We're flipping down. And God declares that he can forgive. Not he will forgive, but he can forgive. Moshe is very excited, and he bows down. What's he pray for? Listen carefully. God tells Moshe, if I find favor in your eyes, yelech na Hashem b'kirbenu. Dwell with us. Even though we're not okay. and forgive us for our sins, because now that you can forgive, now you dwell with us and travel with us to the land of Israel. Okay. And God says a, a qualified yes, not so fast. And Chazal put right here the commandment to build the Mishkan. You want my Shekhinah to return? Not so fast. The Shekhinah left after Chetayegel. It's outside the camp. He's only with Moshe. Moshe now prays to God. Even though, even though we're in Am Oref, and forgive us. God says, I can forgive you, but prove to me first you're worthy of my forgiveness. And we have for six months we build a Mishkan to prove we're worthy. That's why after Yom Kippur, we start working on the on the sukkah. Now, when does the Shekhinah finally return? The Shekhinah doesn't return to the very end of Sefer Shemot. Remember? On, on the first day of Chodesh Nisan, remember? At the very end of Sefer Shemot, that's the Rambam builds this whole parallel there. Um, after it's all built, Moshe couldn't go in until God calls him in. And that's all the parallels to, between that the Rambam builds this whole Shitan. Now, in Sefer Vayikra, we go back to that um, the seven days of, we build the Mishkan and we go back to the seven days of preparation, of inauguration. On the eighth day, the Mishkan is functional. And now we're hoping the Shekhinah, instead of being outside the camp, and the Olmite outside the camp, it'll be an Olmite inside the camp. So we need to do something that day, and this is key to understanding Yom Kippur. That's why I went back to, to that parallel. Let's go take a look now at um, Baikra chapter 9 on Yom HaShmini. Well, it's Moshe Shmini. Okay. Moshe tells, God tells Moshe and Aaron and the elders, um, I mean, Moshe calls um, all the elders and tells, and tells Aaron, that he has to take a special korban. He has to take a chatat and an ola, an egel chatat and ayol ola to bring. And B'nai Yisrael to bring a korban, a sir chatat and an egel v'kevas lola. But what's important is, this is the only precedent to Yom Kippur, where the people bring a korban, chatat ola, and Aaron brings a korban, chatat ola. That duo korban, that's going to be Peter and Yom Kippur. But because this isn't Yom Kippur yet, this is Yom HaShmini, it's an inaugural day, and it's like Har Sinai, the first Luchot. We want to fix them. We have a Shlamim. Remember Har Sinai had a Lot in Shlamim? We won't have this in Yom Kippur, but we have this. That's the Shamit Sibur we have on Shavuot. Reminds us of this. If you remember what's special about Shavuot, that alludes to that. But on this Yom Hashmini, because we're reliving Har Sinai, we need a Shlamim. We have a Lot in Shlamim, but we had a Chatat because of Chet Ege on the Midan. Now, but that's the Korban. They, they bring what God commanded them. And what's the purpose? Ki hayom Hashem God's glory is coming back today. I need now the korban doesn't bring the shechina right? because the shechina is coming. I need to bring a korban. I'll give you a better analogy. Um, I used to use it when the queen was still alive. If the queen's coming to her house for 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 dinner, right? If she's coming to her house, you make a special meal. Now, if you make a special meal, that won't bring the queen. <laughs> but if the queen's coming, of course you'll make a special meal. Got it? And because if she finds out there is a special meal, she won't come. It's not that the meal brings the queen. 
It said, because the queen's coming, I need to make the meal. And therefore, because God's coming on this day, therefore, we need a special korbanot. That's the point I'm trying to get across. Okay? So they bring, and therefore, Moshe tells the people, here's what God commanded. Because God's coming, God's glory is coming today, be prepared. Okay? And they, they tell us, Aaron, Aaron does his korban, dot, dot, dot. Okay? And finally, the korban, it's over. Now watch what happens. They do everything kashir tziba Hashem and Moshe. Right? Now, at the end of the Avodah. We do the same thing, don't we? We finish Monesra and we do Birkat Kohanim and Sim Shalom, which is a blessing for Birkat Kohanim. And he finishes all the Korbanot. Now that we brought all the Korbanot, we're waiting for what? We have to relive our Sinai. This one of the most confusing Pesukim and Chumash, isn't it? We just brought all the Korbanot. The Shekhinah should come now, right? Moshe Baron El Remember? Now, all the Parshanim are bothered by this. What, what are they going in for? <laughs> to leave? My whole point is, this is the highlight of the day. Right? They could go, they were able to go in. This is the Kinesah of the on Yom Kippur. Got my point? It's not, I know, the way Rashi understands it is that because the Shekhinah didn't come yet, what happened? They went into Davim for the Shekhinah, Right? And then you'll remember, maybe it's maybe I sinned, but and they prayed, God answered the prayer, and Kavod Hashem came. But my point is that because the Shekhin is there, now Moshe and Aaron can enter the Kodesh Kodeshim because we had this preparation. This enabled them to enter. The goal of this day, this was the purpose of the day, for Moshe and Aaron to enter the Lomoed. What enabled them to enter? The Korban of the Am and, and Aaron, the Kapara. Okay? And therefore, we're told they were able to come and they came out alive, got it? And they blessed the people. And now, now we did the Kvod Hashem was in the Mishka, now the Kvod Hashem is on all the people. That was by Moshe Aaron going up to Arsina, now Kvod Hashem is on everyone. So Eish comes and eats the Korban, and it's a sign that God accepted the Korban, right? And then Aaron and Nadavanidu did something wrong. What they did wrong, that's a different topic. But they did something wrong and they got burnt, everyone knows. Now, but that means that this day of encountering the Shekhinah is really dangerous. You follow? Because if you're not perfect on that day, there's God's a forgiving God, but on the one day that you really want to get that close, you know, it's when your Midat Arachamim allows you to, to come back and encounter, but the actual encounter, you got to be on your toes. There's no room for mistakes. And therefore, listen carefully, if I need to do a yearly encounter, Right? It's going to be dangerous. Now, God says, once a year, I need a Yom Hashmini. Got it? Once a year, I need to remember our encounter with God. I need to remember our Sinai. I could do it on Shavuos. What's the problem? That didn't work. Right? I could do it Rosh Chodesh Nisan. We had a problem. <laughs> that also didn't work. We had a problem. right? But I need to do it once a year. What's the best day to do it? Yom Kippur. And that's going to explain... Have, now, after Nadav and Aviyu died, which is the beginning of Parshat um, Achrimot, isn't it? God tells Moshe after Moshe and then died, you know what? Clearly, you can't go whenever you want into the Kodesh Kodeshim. That reminds Moshe, you can't come whenever you want to the Kodesh Kodeshim, okay? Okay? because you'll die, right? But if you go in, you need to bring, you have to have an Anan in Kaporet. But if you do go in, the, the, if, if you are going to enter, in order to enter, you have to bring the same Korban we did on Yom HaShemini. Now, when the whole thing is over, we talked about this last week briefly. This is how to enter once a year. Now, we need to enter once a year. It's not clear what day yet, but we enter once a year. So God says, after our Nadab and Aviyu died, after Nadab died, on Rosh Chodesh Nisan, when they came in, on the first time in Gad Shekinah came down, when it's all over and God says, you can't come in, you can't barge in, you have to do this whole ritual to be able to come in, the encounter. Then he says at the very end, when it's way over, I'm just going to be all the way to the end. Seven. When you do this, in the seventh month, on the tenth day of the month, um, you know, fast that day. Remember, don't eat, don't drink, etc. Okay. Why? Why? Why not? Why did the Avoda? But why did I pick this day over any other day? Because it's Yom Kippur. 
because it's the anniversary of God giving us the Mila Torah My claim is Kibiyom Azei Chaper is explaining why I'm doing it on the 10th of Tishrei and not why I'm doing the Avodah. Now, this is the safest day to do it. And when did God tell this? When did God decide what day to do the Avodah? After another one of you died. So I'm saying we need to do this once a year. And, but the decision to do it specifically on the anniversary of God announcing is Midot Abrahamim, that was after another one of you died. That, that's my key point I wanted to get across. Right? Now, now I have a couple of minutes to go through the Seder Avodah, which we'll do more in detail when we do the, the Piyu. Okay. So, what do you need to do? My point, and again, the goal is to enter. In order to enter, I need kapara. Kiba anan or la kapara, it's just like we need an anan in Har Sinai. We need an anan to go into the Kodesh Kodeshim. You need special clothing. And we need a korban of kapara for Aaron and for the people. So Aaron has to bring a par la chatat and ayolola. That's what we did on the thing. He has to bring special clothing. Now, is it white clothing, which is not fancy? The main thing is not gold, but white. Or the special, you can argue. Um, if you remember, there's Truman Tadesh and also with um, Big Day Lavan, but that's a topic Yoni Grossman talks about it in his book. Not for now. And B'nai Yisrael have to bring, Aaron brings his korban, Vazot Yavol Aaron Kodesh. And now from B'nai Yisrael, we bring what? Two series in Melchatat, number one inside, one outside. And then Aaron, he doesn't offer it yet. That's the confusing here. He does smicha, which is the way Chazam understands beautifully because he didn't check it yet. Aaron does smicha on his par and does vidui. That's why he does Anna Shem Chatati Aviti. We'll do that in the Avodah. In other words, here Aaron does vidui. He does what's vidui in English? Confession on his par for himself and his Shevet. And then he takes the two Siri and picks one, which one goes indoors and outdoors. Okay. And then he does Goralot. And then um, he gets one ready you know, for the Chatat, but it's then for Lazazel. Okay. Basically, get everything ready. Then Aaron shechs his, but he brings his par again to do vidui for the entire Shevet, the par, after his family. And then v'chiper bado bad beto. That's why v'chiper has to mean confession. That's how Chazal learned. And then he shechs it. Decree doesn't mean he shechted it. It can't, <laughs> because here he shechs it, unless it came back to life. So therefore Chazal understand he means this decree and the earth, first decree is what we call vidui. This is all part of davening. That's the Anashem Chatati Aviti Pashati, etc. The first one is Ani Uviti, and this is Ani, me, and my whole shavit of the Kohanim. And then he shakes his Chatat, <laughs> and then he has to bring uh, the blood in. Um, of the, but before he can go inside to bring the blood, he has to make the smoke screen, and therefore he takes the coals from the Mizbeach and brings it inside the Ktoret. He makes the smoke screen. Notice, I can't enter. The Kodesh Kodeshim without an Anak Torah, like Har Sinai. And he makes the Anak Torah, okay? And then he takes from the Dam of the Par and sprinkles it one up and seven down. That's, uh, you know, remember Acha, that's when it comes, Acha, Acha, Shushtayim, okay? So what's up? And in front of the Kabor, it's seven times with his finger. And then he sends, sends he checks the Sir of the, of the people, the Sir Chatat that goes inside. And he brings his Dam also inside, maybe, you know, it's inside the Parochet. He does the same thing to the dam of the sir, like he did dam apar, one up and seven down. Got it? That's 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 the main avodah, and that's how he enters. Okay. Now, now we get I call the highlight of it. We're summarizing. What did he do? The chipper ala kodesh. He called a tone, prepares, um, gets ready, whatever you, whatever word you want to use. Um, but the kodesh, which means now the kodesh kodeshim, he's cleansing it or preparing it. Right. From what? From entry of people not worthy. Right? Because we're not perfect in it. Because, because we sin. We've sinned in the past. We'll sin again. We're not, we're an Anksha Oref. We're not perfect. But we want to enter anyhow. So therefore, we need Kapara. We need protection from punishment that's due to us. Okay? And therefore, and we do the same thing for the Old Moed in the outer courtyard, at the outer, um, the, the, with the Shochan Menorahs. Why? I think that's the giveaway. God dwells with us even though we're Tameh. What enables God to dwell with us even though we're Tameh are showing God we want to learn from our mistakes. Are showing God that what enables it, God's Bidot of Rachamim, which he announced on Yom Kippur, 
with the second luchot. When Moshe goes up to get him. And the two things, God's ability that he can forgive and our willingness to learn from our mistakes and our recognition we're not worthy of the encounter, that enables the encounter. And that, that's how we understand is the as the, the the meaning of the ritual behind Yom Kippur, which is, I think, super important in our relationship with God as individuals and as a people. Okay? Then we have all the parallels to Moshe and her saying, no one can be the whole Moshe with him. I say, no, it's for him, his, uh, his family, and for the whole people of Israel, because we're all, he's representing us, but he's on behalf of the people. It's called a Shlech Tzibor. That's in Yimani Memas, if you know the prayer before Musaf and Yom Kippur, as a Shlech Tzibor. Then he goes and does the, um, I call this a little bit of housekeeping. Actually, housekeeping, this should have been, um, what do you call it? The housekeeping should have been before Pasuk Yitzchad. I messed up there a little bit. Now, um, he does, I call this housekeeping. He has to do the Adam on the Mizbeach, what do you call it? Hachitzon, on the Mizbeach Toret, that we talked about in Parsha Tzadah. So on the Mizbeach Toret, um, he puts seven times, Bikitzon, 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 also. And he finishes cleaning up the, the Kodesh. That's, the, that's the, what we call Kodesh Kodeshim. The Obey, what we call the Kodesh. And the Mizbeach, Mizbeach which is the Mizbeach Torah. And then he brings the Sirachai. And now, on the special day, we do we get Kapara even for, not, not for, even for Zdono. Okay? And he does Vidui Vitvadalav, I'll call the Nobel Sao Pishem Echotatotam. That's unique, the Yom Kippur topic in itself. And we send that outside. But because it's for Zadon, it doesn't belong in the temple. The temple is for learning from mistakes you do unintentionally. But these you do intentionally, God will forgive you, but it doesn't belong in the temple. And therefore, symbolically, I send it away. With, because I need I need to clarify, the temple is not for, I'll do a sin and say I'm sorry and, and repeat it again. So the idea of, of sinning on purpose, mazy, and being forgiven, that's, that, that's, God will do it once a year, symbolically, to know there's always room to do tshuva, but we can't make it a habit. So we'll do it, but send it out from the temple. Send it away, but not, not in our mikdash. So then he sends it to, an, to the, that's the Sir uh, He sends it to the desert. And then the most, again, just like we had the difficult Pasuk before, the Avod is over. What happens now? Pasuk Uba Aron Uba Big Day Abad Asher Lavash. What's it? He goes to the Oamoid to change his clothes? Doesn't make any sense, right? What does Chazal say? The, from here we learn he goes in to take out the spoon and the the spoon and the uh, and the shovel because he left it in there because it was too hot to take out the first time. Remember that from here we learned that Kohen Gadol goes five times. I mean, he enters, he changes clothes five times. He enters twice to the Kodesh Kodeshim. The first time the Avodah, the second had to take out the the spoon and the shovel. They learned from here, but I want to claim just like we had on Yom Hashmini. Now, the, after they brought the Korban, remember, let me go back and show you that real fast. If I go back to Yom Hashmini, what happened? That was that was the strange part. Right? They finished all the Korbanot, remember? The two, the Chatat Ola, Chatat Ola, everybody. Right? Um, and they bring all the things, Kashir Sibad Moshe, all the Korbanot are done. Aaron does Berkat Konim, and he finished the Chatat and Ola and the Shlamim. And when all the Korbanot are over, now, also by us, all the Kabbalah to finish now, we, we finished all the Kabbalah, Sir Lassem, Sir Lassazel, all the Kabbalah, and now what happens? Where is, are we? Uba, Rona, Omoed, blank. Now there's a Vaitsu, what did they do? So Chazad, they daven. That's what the Kohen Gadol does, he davens. Remember, he davens here? That's the Tfilah of the Kohen Gadol. He davens. When he does Tfilah, it's a Machloka, but I think it's when he davens. Because this is the main time. He, this is this is in my opinion the main entry, and then there's an intentional you fill in the blank, mm -hmm. and then later on, obviously he doesn't obviously he doesn't take off his clothes there. You know, by saying here he took off his clothes, is telling you something's missing. It's, but it can't mean he goes some way to change his clothes. That's impossible. Agreed. Which means something's missing. What's missing is a highlight. Remember when we did the obfuscation in Harsinai? Remember the, the 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 main event is how close do you get to God if what's missing? It's the same idea. The, the, the highlight of the day, you fill in the blank. Right here is 23 and a half, right? 23 and a quarter, whatever it is. Right here is the highlight. Moshe Aaron goes into the Moed, representing the Jewish people. He enters. Now it's safe to enter because we did all the things. That's the highlight of the day. And then 
to highlight that this is a highlight, that there's a blank here, right? We end it with what obviously happens later. And then he takes off his clothes. That that now the housekeeping. He changes his clothes and then he washes his clothes again. But I'm just saying the continuation here is telling you something's missing. Because it can't be pshat. But why is Khamish doing that? I think that's it's obfuscating the most important. It's what the same thing he did in Harsina, it obfuscates right, the most important point. Because you have to look for it. And therefore, that's the highlight of the day where Aaron goes into the Omoe, which represents um, Moshe Rabbeinu going up to Arsenai and, and enabling this encounter with God. But in order to do that encounter, we had to show God a show. We had to do the rituals of the Korbanot. Okay. Um, then he does, I call this housekeeping. He has to wash his clothes, remember? Um, and then he does the regular Korbanot outside. Okay. And he brings the Chedla V'chatat. Remember, that's regular Avodah. And then the person saying this has to wash his clothes, and the person who burnt the parchatat, you know, someone calling that housekeeping. It's like what we have with the thing. Now, that's how you enter once a year. Then say when though, right? Now, because Achrei Moshe on 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 Rosh Chodesh Nisan, now God tells Moshe or Chumash tells the reader, "By Tazot Lechem Luchat Olam when Luchashvi Vesor Lachodesh Tanu Adafshotechem Chomel Tasu." Because this day is special. This connects it with Yom Kippur, with what we call Yom Kippur from the Moadim. Now, would there be Yom Kippur anyhow without the Avodah? I hope you're following now. It could be there would be Yom Kippur in Chodesh Tishrei without the Seder Avodah. And maybe the Seder Avodah might be another day, once a year. Now I'm telling you, what's the best day to do? I'm saying, this isn't the reason for Yom Kippur. Yom Kippur stands alone. Because it's marking the anniversary of the second Luchot. And God's announcing his, his Midot to Brachamin. And even if the Kohen Gadol didn't do the Avodah on that day, it would still be Yom Kippur. But now God's saying, the best day to do the, the if once a year, you understand there's two different topics going on. Once a year, I need to rededicate the temple. I need another Yom HaShmini. I need to re-inaugurate the temple once a year. Um, and therefore, and when I rededicate the temple, I need to enter and I need to do a special ritual like we did on Yom HaShmini. What's the best day to do it? On Yom Kippur. On the 10th of Tishrei. Why? Because that day is that we're showing God that we're ready for this. You know? and, um, and that explains why the, the strange way, it doesn't say do this on Yom Kippur. It says, do this once a year. Got it? Um, and But the best day to do it now is on Yom Kippur. Why? Because of what happened in the review on, Rosh Chod, on, on what an alternate good day to do it on Rosh Chodesh. That's, 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 that's the real Rosh. Is it Rosh Chodesh Nisan, the real Rosh Hashanah? Remember, Yom Hashmini was Rosh Chodesh Nisan. That's, that's HaChor Shadachan Rosh Chodeshim. That's probably a much better Rosh Hashanah. But no, this is a better because this one worked, because God, what enabled the encounter is God built of Rachamim. Now, then we have, um, we're summarizing. That's in the future, not only Aaron, but anyone could take over him. Okay? And now we're going to summarize the key point. This is the yearly um, cleansing of the temple, the yearly preparation. Listen carefully. Why That's Ms. Bakhtar, got it? No, it's, this is once a year, no matter what. It's, this we do, once a year we have to do that. And when do we do it? On Yom Kippur, which is also once a year. But now we're putting, once a year I need to get the temple ready, to re-cleanse the temple, like Yom HaShmini, to make it official. And the best day to do it now is on Yom Kippur, on the seventh day of, because, right. so that's why I wanted to get across today, of, of understanding, now, the, the actual pute that we do, and how we do it, how we say it on Yom Kippur, that's going to be the shir on Yom Yom Kippur, in the Siddur, but why we mention it on, on, um, in our, on, on Yom Kippur davening, that's why Musaf and Yom Kippur is so important because what we do in, in 
and uh, by by describing the avodah is basically the essence of Yom Kippur, where we're showing God we want to be His people. We recognize we're not worthy of our job, but we're worthy of our job because we show God we're not worthy. That's my point, and that's what kapara is about. Therefore, the fact I'm showing God I need protection, which shows I'm in an upside relationship, and therefore I, I'm 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 showing God I really want my job. I want to do a good job, but I make I, I'll try my best to learn from my mistakes. God's willing to forgive us because we're so dedicated to doing our job. So that's that's the as opposed to that's something much more logical than mystical. There's logic, the logic to the day, etc. Okay, so that's our share for yeah. My time's up anyhow. I'll take questions for a minute. Stop the share. Uh -huh. and, yeah, go ahead. Okay, so um, your lacuna in verse twenty three that. That there's there's some things missing. That's beautiful. That's that's Ramban's nistar. The the revelation is not going to be like it was on Har Sinai. It's going to be nistar, and so it's and and, and you have to, that, that, that's called obfuscation. Yeah. Remember we did yeah. nine and three quarters when we did Har Sinai. No, when the people said we want, you know, we want here God directly, but never worked in the end. So that, that's the idea behind it. That's. I know the Babu Cricks have different reasons for it, <laughs> but, but uh, I think this makes more sense because it's consistent all through all through the Harsinai narratives. No, no questions on the chat. What happened today? Either no one understood anything, or it was clear one or the other. <laughs> right. I was going to say extra clarity, just the sources. Yeah, nothing else. Okay. Anybody okay. comments, questions? Okay. All right. Otherwise, as I mentioned at the beginning. Uh, Rabbi Leaptag's next year will be Saturday night, uh, yes. 10 p.m. Eastern time. Usher, you got to get up early in the morning, five in the morning to come. And if Rabbi Leaptag can do it, it's also, on, a, it's also on YouTube. Uh, no, 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 but that's not the same. I'll be that's your right. Huckleberry. Right. As, as the movie says, I'll be your Huckleberry. I didn't understand the whole thing about the Cohen Gadol's preparation that we have to do this to be worthy. My understanding is God commanded him to come in once a year. And if God is going to create a situation where the guy dies, he's creating a situation that's untenable and undoable. God should only, and this is, you know, and I assume can only uh, ask something that's actually doable. And he knows he's dealing with people which are, aren't perfect by definition. So it's not a matter of our trying to figure out a way to go in we're not instigating it. God is commanding to do it, and it has to be something doable. And so, why do people play professional football? Is it You're asking me either, right? because they want to have a shorter time to be able to walk properly after their careers. <laughs> I'm saying people play football because they want their that's their sport. That's what they want to do, but they need put on a helmet and 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 shin guards and foot guards and train and everything, but. You're gonna encounter your enemy. You found those. You gotta play. You gotta play ball. But it's super. Of course, it's dangerous. You you might get really injured. But but when there's what the there's a reason to play. It might be your salary. Maybe you love sports. But you do people do things that are dangerous because they're important to them. But they require protection. All right. How do you how do you bridge the gap, or can you bridge the gap between the Torah's conception of Yom Kippur? where it's not communal, everybody is at their house, and it's basically over an hour after sunrise because they keep him up, they do the korban, he goes in, according to the description in the Mishnah, where with us, we even have an extra na'ila, we keep it going. It's completely different. You know, the people knew by 10 or 11 o'clock, they might have heard the word, the Kohen didn't get, didn't get zapped this year, everything is good. Whereas we make it a day-long thing, and like I said, theirs was over in the morning, shortly after sunrise. I, I think Aryam Kippur is, is built on a much deeper understanding of, of the Psukim. Um, we did. That was the rabbis understand it's not ritual. It's not it's not mystical. And it's not, you know, is it gonna turn what color it's gonna turn? But if I take it, if I take it at face value, it looks like voodoo, doesn't it? Or something super mystical? Absolutely. Yeah. When when you look at the parallels and the and the careful wording. And 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 everything behind it and the date. That's that was my whole point of the year. Is when when you study it carefully, there's something much deeper there because it relates to the day of God announcing 
his his attributes of mercy. Remember, Moshe goes up and says, "So um, you're you're not you you're not a you're not a mit katnima dorot uh, kind of guy if you're saying we have a deeper understanding of the no, than the earlier Chazal generations." I think Chazal had that understanding, and that's why they turned it into day of 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 screaming God's midot rachamim all day long and and saying Hashem no magadnu and saying showing God we want to shkinah even though we're tamei. How do we say we're tamei? We've sinned Hashem no magadnu. At least at least our neighbors have. Maybe we haven't, but. Other people did. Uh, 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 because we're perfect, but maybe someone else didn't. But the the um, but my my point is exactly the opposite, is that when you read this Pshukim carefully, even though at face value it looks like it's mystical and voodoo, when when you look at what each thing represents, there's something deep there. The Sir Lachatad goes back to Yosef and his brothers, and Allah Shemi Manachnu, and and um and things like that. No, your question was exactly the point of the share is to show that there's something that our understand our Yom Kippur fits much nicer into the deeper meaning of the Psukim. The idea of encountering God, the need for once a year to remember you're not a consumer with God, but you're an employee and you're praying. And that's why our prayers are we want to be a good employee. It's the Tara becomes cleaning your heart. Remember, I'll just quote um Rabbi, no, Eben Ezra. About Shabbos, right? What's he say? Right? You're not allowed to do Malacha on Shabbos, right? So you can't do Malacha on Shabbos. You can't do laundry. But you do do laundry. What laundry do you do? You wash out your heart, okay? That's, um, what song is that? Keshmer Shabbat, right? No, is that, which one is that? That's okay. Okay. Rabbi, if the, if the Voda is so important, why do, why is it only a peel? Why, why is it like that in this silence moment extra? Why is it only like a peel toward the end of most? And uh, why wouldn't we say it just because it's a problem for the day? I didn't hear the... Jake, translate the question, Jake? Yeah, basically, I think, Marty, what you're asking is why when we say V, do we, do we say it right at the end of the Shmon Esrei as opposed to in the middle? Is that your question? Oh, why is it... Why is it... Oh, is it... Silence, yeah, it's the uh, end of the Shmon Esrei. It, it's, it's the same thing we do every day. We say regular Shmon Esrei for the Tzibor, and then we do Tachnun afterwards. In other words, we, we do a Shamnu, we, we do our 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 Vidui, we do, it's like Tachnun. It's just we do it before before Sim Shot, before Ritzay. But, uh, but, but, but the idea is that first we do our, our communal um, you know, encounter with God. And then we ask, now, remember, we're remembering God can't forgive us. Not that he did forgive us. He can't forgive us. And now we have to show God we're deserving of his forgiveness by recognizing... I'm not, I'm not talking about the Vildui. I'm talking about the Avoda and the part and the and the Pesuki for the Avoda. Why if it's part of I mean, is it part of the of the of the carbonus of the day? Why don't we? Put oh, so I I understand now. What I'm saying is that's exactly my point in the beginning. The seder avoda I put where the with the carbonus to pinchas. You understand? No, it's the, the standard format of musaf on the holidays is bivnei chatainu. No, it's atav chatanu bivnei chatainu. We wish God would bring us back. We could do the Avodah. And therefore, right before we do the Musaf of Parsha Pinchas, we do the Seder Avodah first. Then we bring the... the no, it's we, we... we I forget exactly which one comes first in, in, in our Moxer, but we we do the Seder Avodah together with the beginning of Musaf where we quote the Korban. In the same place, we do it on every other Yom Tov. And then like every other Shmon Esra and Yom Tov, we do Slichot, we do Asham and Shmakaleinu at the end. Afterwards, and so anyway, I, I have seven thirty marv. Um, they move marv up. So I have to stop cool. here.
Okay. Um, well, have a good weekend. Everyone have a... Uh, we'll see you before Rosh Hashanah still. Okay. Yes. Yeah, next, you make the answer. Catch tomorrow. Bye-bye. 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 And then tomorrow, of course, 1 p.m. Eastern. Benny Gazunta continue with series difference between the Bavli and Yerushalmi as regarding oh, to... to what? And uh, oh, the um, additional share this week, Wednesday, um, Rabbi Ari Zivotovsky will be giving a share at 11 be, uh, before our Jonas here on uh, the origins of Shofar. Uh, he always has interesting historical tidbits. Uh, so that will be 11 a.m. Eastern. I'll send out a, you know, a special email about that. Okay, and then, uh, like, of course, next Sunday, our Yomi Yun, as we mentioned a number of times, and Rabbi Liebtag will be Saturday night at 10, and then 9.15 in the morning, I'm going to kick off the Yomi Yun going to 1.30, eight speakers back-to-back with a 50-minute break in the middle. But uh, maybe one, I told our speakers to speak for 29, between 28 and a half and 29 and a half minutes. So we get between 30 and 90 seconds to stretch between uh, shearing. So hopefully we'll be on time, but uh, I can't control everything, but uh, we'll do our best. But uh, please, God, uh, look forward to seeing you next week. And please tell your friends about it. That's a really, even people who don't normally come, I think next week is a great opportunity to introduce them to some of the wonderful teachers we have at Torah in Motion. And um, okay, thank you very much. We hope to see you soon. Everybody have a wonderful day. It's Labor Day weekend here. And in the States, I know people are surprised. Oh, can the Canadians have Labor Day weekend too? Yeah, we have Labor Day weekend with a U. Unlike uh, you who just have with an O, but okay, we won't. Uh, if you know, <laughs> I, nobody got what I was talking about. Okay, Canadians understand what I'm talking about. Okay, with the OU. And uh, anyways, and back to school on Tuesday. But uh, Israel went back to school on Friday already. But uh, here we're very machmir. You're not allowed to teach in school till after Labor Day in Ontario. You'd get thrown into jail. You try something like that. <laughs> I don't know. Okay, have a wonderful day, everybody. Hope to see you soon. Thank you very much. Bye bye. Thank mm-hmm. you.